Welcome, welcome once again. This is OSM Vision, bringing you that Woosabat flavour. Yeah, this is episode four um, of Get Your Questions Answered. And um, remember, you have to like the question that you want people to answer or that you want us to answer. So if it's your own question, you can comment and like it as well, you know. Get your friends, family to like your question because we only have a limited amount of time to answer the questions. So the questions that go to the top are the ones that are most liked. Yeah, but don't forget to subscribe as well and share. All right. So yeah, let's let's get to the let's get to the questions. I'm always excited to see what new questions we have. All right. So let me just uh, yeah get my glasses and let's have a look. Okay. All right. Uh, I have posted my question four times and it keeps getting deleted. Why? I don't moderate. I don't moderate the platform. So I guess is there any profanity? Is there any you know you being rude or anything? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what your question is, but you have to ask the, um, the moderators on the platform for that. Uh, okay, that's that one. What's your question? Oh yeah, see, oh, it's some vision already replied. What's your question? Like. You know, just ask your question. Right. Uh, at OSM Vision, did we choose the experiences that we encounter in this lifetime and is manifesting real too? When we're in contact with ancestors or higher beings, how do we know if they can be trusted? Three, is there someone that, can, that we can speak to? to help with information that's being received from our ancestors. I've received information that I don't know what to do with. Thank you. Okay, uh, it says thank you, Master Teacher. I I'm not the Master Teacher. I'm a student teacher of the Master Teacher, Pana Babianun, Dr. Malachi Z. York. But, you know, I'm a humble student teacher and I'm a learner just like you. That's why we say student teacher, because I'm a student first, and then once I learn, each one teach one. So then all of us that are students, we share the information, hence student teacher. But yeah, let's answer these questions. So did, do, did we choose the experience that we encounter in this lifetime and it's, and it's manifesting real? Yes, to a certain degree, because this lifetime may be one of your 24 to 24,000 cycles. Yeah. Remember, we've broken down before that you can have up to 24,000 cycles um, and there are chances for you to kind of constantly evolve, constantly improve yourself and then if you elevate and you built up enough juice, for lack of a better word, you don't have to come back. All right. Um, the reason you choose is because I explained also in a previous video that depending on what you have to complete in terms of your purpose, it's wise to choose someone who's going to help you accomplish that. It still has to be within your, your pool or your bloodline. So, you know, you, you choose to come through um, someone in your ancestry. So, for example, you might have a, a long distant relative that has given the child to someone and, you know, and they've grown and they've got a family and now you've come back and you can come into their family. Do you know what I mean? So, yes, you do. Um, and as far as the experiences go, there are different reasons. So most of us come here to experience everything, right? experience a lot of things that, that's within our grasp and or to help us basically evolve. And so some things that you are witness to and you experience might not be of your own doing. So if you, for example, um, witness somebody or you're involved somehow in, say, a murder taking place, the master teacher, Pana Babjanun, has taught us that everyone involved may have to come back, or, or let's say you were the perpetrator, you murdered someone, for example, you would have to come back and experience what, let's say, the relatives of the person or the friends of the person that was there that you murdered, for example, you would have to experience what they experienced, each one of them. So yeah, that's another way that you may be coming back to experience something. Um, manifestation is real. The thing about manifestation is that 
Okay, so there's English language and the English words, so we have to break down words as well because of etymology, etc. When we say manifestation, you're really saying man is infesting the planet, right? Which is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the ability to make something come to the physical or manifest in the physical from the mental reservoir or from you putting that energy to make that thing happen. So yes, you can manifest things. The thing about manifestation is it's not just, I think of something and then it happens. It has to be your intentions, yeah, this is so key. Your intentions have to align with natural nature, with the universe, with, is it a, a, a positive thing that's going to be of benefit, of benefit, it's going to be beneficial to humanity. So sometimes people might have, you know, they want to manifest something, but it's of selfishness. It's about what they want, yeah? And think about it. It wouldn't make sense if I'm a bad, negative, disagreeable person and I can manifest what I want. Because I could just say, I want to manifest wickedness on everyone. Like, it, it wouldn't work. It doesn't make sense. So manifestation has to have an alignment with natural nature and positivity and you doing something to help humanity. So if you've got the right intentions, the right energy, and it's seen that it's aligned and will help, yeah, you'll make it happen. And that might be in your life to start off with, and it then might be in terms of, you know, your immediate community, then to the wider society and to humanity. So yeah, manifestation does work if it's for the good of more than yourself. Yeah, and if you're just on a selfish thing, and I'm not saying people can have purpose in terms of they can they can like put energy into something and make it happen as well, and and this is why you might say okay, there's lots of disagreeable people that still manifest something, but you have to go back and see like was it them or was it the fact that for example someone else gave it to them? Do you know what I mean? So like some people are born into wealth a lot of wealth that they didn't really manifest 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 that they just born into the wealth but they can use that wealth in a disagreeable or a positive or a negative way yeah all right you've got quite a few questions so let me try i'm going to try and skip through the questions really quickly um today as much as i can you still get your answer though um when we're in contact with ancestors or higher beings how do we know if they can be trusted excellent question it's, this is so important because you have people that can be impost, imposters or fraudsters, yeah? Like appearing to be your ancestors only to trick you, yeah? So it is important to know. How do you know? You know because you actually have innate within you a way of deciphering things and knowing things. This is called sound right reasoning, yeah? You're able to feel as well like this is where your higher senses we talk about all the time like your intuition your psychometry your telepathy and your clairvoyance yeah these things help you to be able to decipher and know things like you will just know like intuition is the ability to know something without no one telling you right so that's a way of developing your intuition you can know because you will feel comfortable like if you're in a situation where is something good for you, like is your ancestors or your parents or your ancestors, like your great grandma or whatever, they're going to be comfortable. This is why when we explain about Holy Spirit and unholy ghost, this is the difference because holy means pure, yeah? And ghost is a disembodied being. So when it's an unholy ghost, yeah, you get thrown on the floor, you foam out of the mouth, you're in a, in a state of being uncomfortable. Whereas, you know, when you're comfortable, you're relaxed, you're calm, you feel you want to go to them, you want to talk to them. If you're afraid, you will run. This is like adrenaline will kick in. These are natural mechanisms within your body to protect you, you know. So that's how you will know. Um, is there someone that we can speak to to help with information that's being received from our ancestors? Again, when you receive information, you receive it in many ways. Some information is just for you. It's not for the whole world. It's not for everyone. It's for you to decipher. And this is why you have to bring out that godliness, godliness or your supreme being to the point where you should be able to remember or decipher the information that's been given to you. 
And yes, you may be able to speak to like-minded beings. Like, for example, someone could have an extraterrestrial experience. But if they're wrong around the wrong people, they're going to feel uncomfortable talking about it because people will ridicule you and make you out like you're crazy. And, you know, we talked about the mental health. They'll, like, tease you or whatever. So if you're around people who don't find that subject to be a taboo or that they can discuss it, and they've had the same experience, it's easier to speak amongst them. Our community, that's why we have these channels, so you can ask your questions and talk about things that some people might think is crazy or strange. But the one thing about being worldwide and being on, online is that you hear different people from different walks of life that have had the same experience. How is it that we're not the ones like, affecting them or telling them what to say? So... Being a, around um, like mind beings, you can then speak freely. There are people that come to the store, come to our classes, and they like they feel scared to talk. We're like, speak, you know. We talk about everything here. Don't don't feel no way. Just speak, and they start speaking. They're like, I'm so glad I can speak about these things because I don't have people around me that I can speak to about these things. So that's why we're here, and we're all over the world. So you know, in, go to your nearest community buy the books, other people are reading the books too. And then you can like, um, yeah, bounce, bounce notes and see. I think that's all the questions. Um, I've received information that I don't know what to do with. Yeah, that, that might come in time because when you receive information, it, might not, it may not necessarily be something you need to act on straight away. Like, I received information, let's say 10 years ago. And I didn't know what it meant. Like, for, I'm just giving you an example until I kind of got more and more knowledge and I was able to put, like, connect the dots and the master teacher said certain things. And so, like, as you go along, you can connect things backwards. Like, you know, Jobs, um, Stephen Jobs, he said, um, Apple guy, yeah? He said, you connect the dots looking backwards. And that's true because something can happen, you don't know what it's about. And then another thing will happen later on in the future. And you're like, oh, no, it makes sense. Like, that's why that happened, because I was meant to do this now. So just be patient sometimes. And eventually, uh, if you can get your, your questions or be around people who have had similar experiences, they can help you decipher it. So be patient. If you've got information you don't know what, what to do with, it will come. Right, next question. I'm from South Africa. How do I get the scrolls? We get so... <laughs> this question keeps coming up again and again and again. Um, you can order the scrolls online if you're far away. If there are no shops or communities in your area, just go online, nashat.co.uk or the unitedsabeansworldwide.com, right? The reason I give both, both um, sites is because sometimes one might run out of a product and you can get it on another website or on another store. Um, and excuse me, the United Nwapian Nations website is the official worldwide site. Whereas you have different branches, different communities who have different stores and may have different websites. And so you can always look through the different bookstores. You can go to the contact us, go to bookstores, see all the bookstores around the world and see the one that's closest to you and order online if, they, if you can. If not, order from nashat.co.uk and we will ship it out. We ship out to you know all over the world all right cool um okay uh, you said you broadcast at Ghanaian radio station i want to know name of of it um i don't recall saying we broadcast on a Ghanaian radio station i said we have a community in ghana uh, i was saying on that particular day i was having a show on our um radio show which is on galaxyafiwi.net every Tuesday between um, 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. today, in fact. I just came from doing a show. So you can always tune in. If the website's functional and working, you can get it on other apps and um, listen in. And you can ask your question live online. You can use your WhatsApp phone or whatever and call in. That's what I was saying, that I was going to have a brother that's based in Ghana known as Duswa, Duswa York, um, and if you go to our nashat.co.uk website, hidden podcast, you'll be able to hear that, um, that broadcast because we always put the, the recorded shows on the website. But he was calling in and we were interviewing him. He was talking about reparations. And that's what I was saying on that day when I was referencing that. But 
he is actually based in Ghana. There's a community in Ghana as well. So if you listen to that show, you'll be able to maybe, um, you know, speak to him. All right. Um, what is the purpose of this physical life? And do our ancestors help guide and protect us in this realm? The purpose of this physical life is for you to master the, the, the material or the physical realm which is the lowest one, yeah, in terms of mastery, because as you're supposed to elevate yourself to become, to be a supreme being, or you were a supreme being if you're a Nagaru or Negroid and you've fallen down. So everyone's ability to master this realm is partly why you're here, yeah, because you have the physical realm, right? You have the spiritual realm, you have the soul realm, you have the mental realm, and you keep going up all the way to the different etheric realms, nine ether, nine levels of them. So the lowest vibration or the lowest one is the physical realm or the material plane. You have different planes as well. So um, that's the purpose, first of all, to master this, because as a species, we have to evolve. We have to become a level four species, meaning that we're supposed to master everything to do with the planet. And then that's level one. Then we're supposed to master everything to do with the solar system we're in and then that's level two then you're supposed to master the galaxy you're in level three level four you master the universe you're in and then obviously each every time you elevate um, and to do that to master let's say the galaxy you've got to be able to travel intergalactically between different galaxies and you need to be able to travel interstellar this is why the, we have to evolve with our technology, with everything we do. Our minds have to be opened up. You know, we're not using a lot of our brains at the moment. Whereas extraterrestrials that have evolved past where we are at, they've moved on. They have learned how to travel intergalactically, interdimensionally. They come from different galaxies, different universes and the multiverses and the omniverses. So the material plane or the physical plane is one that you need to master to elevate and move up. Um, also, you have a purpose to fulfill. You know, you might be needed to like bring a piece of the puzzle or to do something here that will help somebody else or something else to elevate. So, um, and one of the purposes for us is uh, is to teach Wu Sabat because Wu Sabat is the answer and the solution in this day and time for everyone who is willing to accept Wu Sabat. So. Our purpose, our job collectively is to teach Wu Sabat. And you can't teach it if you don't know it or if you're not studying or if you don't read the book. So how are you going to teach it? You know, and that's why Wu Sabat can basically cater to anyone who's willing to listen and who's willing to apply it. Because it's not just about talking and reading the books. It's also about putting into action. And you do that by way of your example. And then you teach other people and everyone teaches and we spread the word. And we assist in Dr. Malachi Ziyot Panabai Bianun as student teachers of the master teacher to spread Wu Sabat. So, you know, so I love doing this. I do this pretty much every day because there's nothing more rewarding than truth, to spread truth. You know, there are going to be people who are going to say it's not the truth and dispute it or whatever. That's fine. But... Truth is truth. You can't argue with that. So, um, but yeah, that's your purpose. Um, there was a second part, I think, to that. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, have I gone past it? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. The second part was, and do our ancestors help guide and protect us in this realm? Yes, they do. Now, the problem is that people think their ancestors are like separate from them you're actually connected to them. The, diff, the problem is that you've cut them off or the world has made you to disconnect from them. And so even though they're there, you're not receiving their help because it's like you're not connected to them. It's like, um, let me give you an example, like a phone call. If you have somebody's phone number and you call them and you connect with them, you guys can talk, they can help you and you can exchange energy, communication, knowledge, whatever, and they can guide you. If someone cuts off your phone, it's like, or gives you the wrong number, you're going to be dialing the number, but you're not going to get through. So the way you connect with your ancestors is to first of all, recognize that they exist, 
recognize that you are part of them because they're your bloodline, recognize that you're connected to them and you've got to just build that connection, repair the, the broken line, if you like, so that you can actually get them to work with you. So yes, they will help you, but you have to tune your ears so you can listen to their frequency, so you can hear their voices, because a lot of the times you hear voices in your head, right? We spoke about that already. You hear many voices. You have to be able to know which is your voice and which is the voices or the voices that are agreeable from your ancestors and you have to know the voices that are disagreeable and you have to know the voices that are not even part of your bloodline or your family or your familiar spirits we say family yeah these are external voices because like frequencies can be sent and you can pick them up so sometimes it doesn't even come from you so yeah it's about again elevating yourself to know what voices you're hearing and one of the ways you can help, one of the ways you can um, help yourself to basically recognize them is every time you hear a voice or you hear someone trying to influence you to do something where there's a strong pull, where you're fighting it, like say someone's telling you to do something disagreeable and you recognize that, label it with a color or a name or something like, I don't know, let's say it's a negative thought, you can go, okay, that's, that's negative red, for example. Uh, or you can give them names like, okay, that's Uncle Sam. He used to like smoking, so he's trying to get me to smoke. I don't want to smoke no more. So you label him Uncle Sam. Next time, you know, another agreeable voice, you label them. And eventually now you get to a point where you will know, okay, okay, that's Uncle Sam. He's trying it again. So <laughs> cut them off, you know. So you've got to find ways of finding out which voices are, um, are coming to you. Okay. I really enjoyed watching your videos. They give me more knowledge, wisdom and understanding. Please keep up the great work. We, 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 we give thanks to you guys for tuning in, for asking the questions. And like, let's just keep it going. Let's share the knowledge. Yeah, so thank you. Um, next question. Thanks for taking our questions. I have a few. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> I can see like eight questions already. Okay. When are you, when are your TikTok live streams again? I know, I know, I've been slacking, I've been slacking. The, um, the TikTok videos, you know what, I've actually got recordings that I haven't had a chance to edit and post because, you know, we're doing a lot um, and we had to just take a bit of a, just kind of like something has to give at some point. So, we, you know, we were working on the book, we were working on the academy, we we're on the radio shows, we're doing these um, episodes now that ask me anything. We do the questions every Saturday. So yeah, some things have to like take a back seat for a moment, but I'm definitely going to go back to the live streams um, within the next couple of weeks when we've kind of moved, got certain things done out of the way. Um, so yeah, just look out for it. I will announce it when we're doing them again, right? Are black people the only ones with nine ether here? What about different species, animals, aliens, etc.? Right, this ether thing, right? When it, there's ether in terms of hair, right? So you've got seven, eight, well, six, seven, eight, and nine ether hair. Um, nine is just like the most potent in terms of the cur, it's very tight. Um, it's the original woolly haired beans. The, um, so in terms of hair, you've only got six, seven, eight, and nine ether. Six ether is flank because it, it, it falls down, it doesn't grow upwards. And then you have a variation of seven, eight. So when you look at people's texture of hair, the thicker it is, the, but then you can see some people, like if you look at the Sands people, their hair is so tightly knitted and curled that you can't even put a comb for it. Yeah, that's nine ether, yeah? And then it goes down in terms of um, potency or gradient. So um, animals, we only, only Negroes have hair on the planet. I know it sounds weird, but that's because every race has a unique trait. And this ties back to the Sans people as well. So the Negroids um, trait is their hair. Everyone else has fur. And um, the, the closest animal is like when you look at, um, if you look at wool, wool would be the closest in terms of animals, right? Because if you look at lambs, lambs have like, Wool. That's why it said in the Bible that Jesus' hair was like lamb's wool. And that's a texture that relates to woolly hair. Um, but yeah, um, so I hope that answered the question. What about different species, animals, aliens, etc.? Um, the aliens, all the races on the planet are descendants of aliens, right? Or extraterrestrials. 
The word alien is used as a gimmick to make people laugh. Ha ha ha, little green men, aliens and all of that. Extraterrestrials, just meaning that they're extra from somewhere else coming to the planet Terra, which was one of the names of this planet. And so go back and watch the OSM video, um, God, um, the universe explained. We, we explain about extraterrestrials. But so on the planet, you have three root races. We've mentioned this also before, which is the Homo habilis, the Homo naledi, that's the African race, right? Their ancestors are the Natharu, right? These beings that came from Orion and Risk. And then that's all the, all the African stock here. Yeah? You've also got like the Anunnaki that came in and mixed with them. In fact, I'm doing a class this week called Anunnaki. Are you, an, are you Anunnaki African or confused? Because this Anunnaki thing is a, it's a subject that keeps coming up and keeps coming up and some people are confused about it. So that's the relationship with the extraterrestrials and the Tharu who are the original first nine ether beings. Then you've got the Dravidians and the Asian stock, which is known as the Homo florensis or the Denosovan, right? This, this is the way anthropologists yeah, are labeling the main races because now they've done DNA testing and they've deciphered the human genome project, right? So that's them. So the extraterrestrials they're linked to will be beings from like Jomo or like the Teros, yeah? Or, you know, different species of extraterrestrial beings. Then you will have the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal, which is the European. Again, that's all of them, right? And they're related to beings like the Anunnaki and to the Pleiadians, yeah? But there's also, as we've mentioned before, if you took it simply, you say Negroid, which would be the black race, yeah? Mongoloid, which would be all the Asian. And then you'll have Caucasoid, right? Which would be the Caucasians. But even within that, there's so many different breakdowns because there's mixtures between different people now. And then you have what we call the neutro neutronoids, or the races that are a combination of different mixes to the point where you can't actually tell which root race of the three I've mentioned they come from. So this whole thing about extraterrestrials is, is so vast and so broad. Um, yeah, so I hope that answered that question. What about the different species, animals, aliens, etc.? Yeah, so I was, I was saying that the root races, they're related to the alien species that I've just mentioned as well. Um, and then there's a lot of mixtures like the draconians, the, rep the reptilians, the greys, etc, etc. All right. Watch our previous videos. We'll go into that as well. It says, if early Egyptians practice ma'at and that's the knowledge that is supposed to be passed on, what went wrong for the Egyptians? Again, when you say Egyptians, that is a term coined by Greeks, right? From Aegyptos or Egyptos which meant burnt faces. That's not the original, original name of the people that we are calling ourselves Sabaeans or Nuwapians, yeah? From Napata and Moro, that area there. So what we're saying is that we're not Egyptians and the Egyptians that you're talking about, every single topic has different levels of breakdown you have to go into. So when you say Egyptians, which Egyptians? Because they're different types of Egyptians. And then you have the dynasties, yeah? the different dynasties, and then we predate all the dynasties. So we are the original yeah, um, beings on the planet from, like I've explained before, from the waters, from the Natharu, who seeded the planet by putting in the genes or the seeds into a capsule, putting them into the, the um, dolphin, which is adult, the dolphins are actually Vulcans. They're from a planet called Vulcan. They're Vulcan beings, and they were in the waters and then they seeded the water and then obviously life evolved from the water and you have lots of civilizations. You see, when you think about the sea, people think, oh, you can go down. Yes, you can go down to a certain level. They have to use submarines to go really, really, really deep. And even then, they can't even get near the depths of the sea. So there are lots of civilizations, sirens and beings that live underwater. You know, only when you have an experience with some of these beings, some people see, they're called the mermaids and mermen, right? These are sirens that existed way, way before. A big tsunami threw things onto land. And then 
you know, the sands people that I've mentioned, going back to the ancient Egyptian stories when they're talking about, you know, the snakes and the frogs of the Ogdoads and the nine, ether, um, nine Inneads, these beings evolved and then what you're calling the sands people. I'm jumping because you're talking about from trillions of years to millions, to billions of years, to trillions of years, yeah, so trillions of years, to billions of years, to millions of years, to thousands of years, to where we are now. So it depends on how far back you're going. Like we can say how life kind of evolved. You can go back to the single cells, you know, the um, metazoas, the protozoas, and so on. But yeah, so um, the Egyptians, what you're calling Egyptians, that was a time period where the different people got taken over because people came into Egypt they were the Phoenicians, right? And, you know, they got burnt by the sun. And they, they say, oh, look at those people. They've been burnt by the sun. They call them Egyptos, I Egyptos, which means to be burnt by the sun. And then when they tell you about the fall of Egypt, they're only talking about a particular area for a small period of time where you have, you know, um, the Greeks that were in Egypt. And you, that's where you get, you know, Alexander the Great and all these people, or the great thief, we should add, because he just stole the knowledge. And then you had Mark Antony, you know, who had a child with Cleopatra. And, um, you know, so th there's a period of time that they're talking about. But we have never, um, we've never fallen. And Ma'at Ma just deals with, with justice, yeah, about being, being fair and being just. And that's something that's universal. It's not just like, it's like, do unto others as you would like to be done to you. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's universal. So Ma'at deals with, just being put, being like, uh, the words good and bad are not really the best words to use because you, someone can say something is good and it's bad and vice versa. But yeah, so um, the part you're talking about when Egypt fell, that's not us. Yeah, um, we are known as Sabaeans or Napateans or Nuwapians, all right? And we've, we're still strong, we're still going. It's just that you've been given wrong information and bamboozled and over the last like 6,000 years during the moon cycle, you kind of fell from grace in terms of you lost your identity, you lost who you are, you lost your true heritage, your, your knowledge, and now you've got to regain it. And as we're coming into the sun cycle, you're going to be more powerful when you tap into your powers. And this is what Wusabat does. Wusabat connects you back to your internal being, which connects you to your ancestors, which connects you to basically using your brain a bit more than normal, and then you can evolve. All right, let's move on. Let's keep it going. Have you personally reached out to Malachi Z. York? When I do research online, I find mixed narratives. Some people saying they can write to him, and others saying no letters are allowed and get returned. Okay. This is why it's so important to stay in touch, come to classes, ask questions, because there's so much misinformation out there, um, everybody claiming this or that. But the way, if you're in the community, if you're inside, you're going to know things from the inside out and not things from the outside in. Because outside is where anything goes. But when you're on the inside, he has connection he's able to write to certain people he's able to speak with certain people you see so and there's a there's a setup in where the communities get direct information from him so we get updates like that he gives us from visits and so on and if you're outside you're not going to hear some of the latest updates if you're in the classes in in the community you're going to learn and hear more so yes you are going to get a lot of chaos and misinformation outside but the people that are inside, they know who's who. I know, I know who's who in the sense that, you know, you have a legal team. You have people, you know, we will quote things like go to freedoctoryork.com. We will say certain things where you can go and find more information. And um, the community is set up in such a way that everyone communicates that it's inside. So get on the inside and you will be, um, you'll be well informed, you know. So, yeah. Um, Come to the classes, ask the questions. Yes, I've personally had my connection with the master in the past, um, but there are people that are in connect, connection with him now that pass on that information. Um, all right, let me just address the writing in part, because it's important. 
So because they're hating on in him in prison, um, when he's so loved that when people write him, the prison gets overwhelmed with, with letters. Literally, they get thousands of letters and they have to deal with that. And sometimes they try to punish him by, you know what I mean, like putting sanctions on him, you know. So they block his mail sometimes, you know, and he can only write to certain people or receive mail from certain people. So we don't encourage people. And then sometimes they let certain mail through, either by accident or whatever. So um, until it's actually broadcasted and made clear to people to say, write him, it's not advisable to write him because at the end of the day, he's the one that gets, you know, gets sanctions and stuff for that. So at the moment, only certain people are able to write him, only certain people he can write. Um, yeah, because, you know, there's, there's rules and laws in terms of like how communication takes place, visits and so on, all right? So yeah, don't be writing letters unless um, it's, you know what I mean? I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to write any letters right now. Can you, can you explain further for me how human resonance can affect humanity? Right, um, again, there's different, different terms that people use, but we've already explained that different like tones and vibrations, right? So we know what the right tones are, which is F, A and C for us. So we don't want to, um, we, we, we get information, we get guidance and we kind of stick to that. Yeah. So there are other types of um, frequencies and other things that people will say um, or tune things out so that you're, you know, you're, you're basically off tune or not in key. So uh, we stick to the tones of F, A and C. I will elaborate a little bit more on that because I see another question that kind of relates to that. Can you talk further about the two other chakras above our head? What are their purpose? Um, again, like I just mentioned, we get updates and we get information from the Master Teacher partner, Bab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York. And sometimes we have to be patient and wait for him to give us more information. Um, so that was something that he told us from an update and he said the two chakras they they sit above your head um, as in not the one that most people know about as you know the the pineal gland um, where the pineal gland is because your glands relate to these energy centers which people call chakras um, which is really just a it's a san sanskrit word and it relates to energy centers now these energy centers they superimpose on actual glands like, you know, pineal gland, your thyroid gland, etc., etc., um, And they're portals, so they, they open up like a vortex because it's an energy, like you can receive energy and send energy, but they can be closed as in not as potent or not functioning, and you will have to reactivate them, you know? Like, if you imagine it's something supposed to spin, but it's not spinning, it's stuck, you know? And you have to kind of clear up what's blocking it, so that you can spin it and it carries on spinning. So these centers, that the seven that most people know about. Another thing as well, um, another way of explaining is when people show these chakras, yeah, they show colors like the red all the way to the purple, um, which is violet really, dealing with the, the levels of vibration. That's why I'm saying they're centers and different vibrations vibrate on different frequencies and frequencies deal with colors and the light, right? So light can be transformed into colors. So the colors, if you took each color, like let's say, let's take red. Most people think of one red when they say red, but there are millions of variations of red, just like there's millions of variations of blue, millions of variations of black. You know, if you look at the black you're wearing, a lot of the time, they're not the same shade of black. So these are actual vortexes or centers and their energy in terms of you can, if you know what to do, if you read The Man From Planet, no, read, um, yeah, read The Man From Planet Risk book, but read The Science of Healing and read The Science of Creation. These are books by Dr. Malachi Z. York and he teaches you how you can align your energy being, yeah, which we talk about and we say your etheric being. You have a connection with your parents on the etheric side, 
you, when you're born into this world, you have doctors on this side that are waiting to deliver you and your, you know, your parents and your mother, you're connected to your mother by the unbiblical cord in the physical, in the etheric, you have etheric parents and you have the etheric cord. That etheric cord is, a, is energy, so it's like it can stretch from one end of the planet to the next. Like it, it's something that you can connect with other beings as well with because it's not a physical connection, it's an etheric or energy connection. And this is why when you get close to someone, like in a relationship or whatever, someone you're very close with, that bond becomes stronger. And when you try to cut ties, as in maybe when, you know, you, you break up or there's a division, it takes a long time for you to, to kind of lose that connection, that energy, that feeling, the butterflies, as people call it in their stomach, you know. So, um, yeah, I hope um, that's answered that question. Um, what was it again? Okay. About the chakras, yeah. So the two are above your head. He hasn't expounded on where or what they're for, apart from they're connecting you, obviously, further to the other realms. And part of the way you will be able to transform yourself or turn yourself inside out and to be able to become a light being or an etheric being, a pure energy being. But more information will come on that. So stay, stay close, stay tight, and it will come. All right. Um, what does Wusabak teach about the biblical giants? Whatever happened to them? Where are they now? Could they make a return? What's stopping them from making a return already? All right, the interesting thing about that question is this. Your concept of what a giant is, um, when you say where are they, they're still around. They, they, they're in the NBA. <laughs> they're basketball players. You know, like when people think of giants, yeah, you're talk, they're like six foot, seven foot, like eight foot. That's what they were talking about. Of course, there are others that are, High, um, in terms of height, like taller than that, but they're still around. These are your, your, you know, your people in the NBA. Like you see some people, you're like, they're giants. They're the children or the descendants of these giants, like the, the Nephilims or the beings that had children um, and these children are still on the planet today and that's been happening for generations and generations. Because remember, originally, going back to what I kind of like touched on briefly when the beings came onto land, from water, they were like, um, the females were like four foot five inches and the, the males were five foot four inches, right? This is where the word, you know, they say the, the patata, it's a short beans. And they started to call them, you know, names like, um, what did they call them? Um, there's a particular name they call them, pygmies, that's it. They call them pygmies to try and, it's like, a, it's like an insult to call them pygmies, but they were those little beans. You can see pictures of them. Um, but the point I'm making is that there was no one on the planet that was taller than five foot four inches at that time. So where did the tall people come from? This is when these giants, these Nephilims or the, they said the Nafala, the beings that fell down, they mixed with these beings. They weren't even supposed to come to this planet at that point. And what happened is with the mixture, they produced offspring. You can read this in Genesis 6-4. And... The offspring is when the, the guardians of the galaxies or the Nataru, the, the overseers, they were like, oh, okay, you guys have done what you're not supposed to, which is come here and have sexual intercourse and, and have children. Because now there were people on the planet that were different heights. That's how they knew that they violated that law, that immigration law of not coming here. So they had to set up and like quarantine them and say like, this is, Nupu, which is like the green zone, and this is Zupu, which is the red zone, and you were not allowed to mix, but that goes into another whole story. But yeah, so the giants are, are still around, um, and they've found skeletons and things like that as well. Where are they now? I've already answered that. Will they make a return? They're already here. What's stopping them from making a return? Yeah, you got to think of what you're saying when you're saying giants. Of course, there are other giants like the Syrians, or the, you know, the, the, um, the Bigfoot, these beings that, like, you know, like Chewbacca in um, Star Wars, like, that's actually telling you. Yeah, Star Wars is a very interesting series because it shows you the different types of extraterrestrials and, you know what I mean? So you still have, you know, them around, but they're so intelligent. Some of them are, like, they can, um, 
camouflage themselves. So when people are trying to find them, they just blend in with the trees and you, people can't find them. And they, they can move at very fast speeds, you know. And a lot of extraterrestrials don't necessarily want to be seen. And you have extraterrestrials that are walking on the planet. They look just like me and you, you know. People take the extraterrestrial thing to be like, everything has got to be grotesque, like an alien, hideous looking and something you don't like. But they might look at you like, you're so ugly, you know. So, um, yeah, let me carry on. I want to get through a lot of questions. Um, if the universe moves in cycles, why does it appear that the negative cycles last thousands of years longer than positive cycle? Is there a universal imbalance? Um, that's not actually true. There is a balance. Um, there's only chaos within a particular cycle, or, or more chaos, shall I say. So I, we've explained that it's 6,000 years of a moon cycle, 6,000 years of a sun cycle, 6,000 years of a sun cycle. So it's, it's four times, and that's like a cycle, yeah? Life is a cycle. Everything is a cycle because regardless what religion or spiritual kind of doctrine you kind of follow, you will, the one thing that's going to be consistent is that you're born, you live, you die. Yeah, that's a cycle. Born, live, die, born, live, die. And that's in every religion. And that's to say that we're not, we're not religion. I'm just saying to you that there's natural nature. There's things in cycles that take place, like seasons take place. You know, um, the, the winter, the summer, the autumn and, you know, the spring or whatever you guys call it, wherever you are. But there's a cycle. And so if you look at nature, nature works in cycles. Um, even just cl clock or the time that, like, you know, you've got s seconds, uh, 60 seconds and then there's minutes and then there's hours and then there's days and then there's weeks and then there's months and there's years. And, you know, it goes on in cycles and it comes back around every time. This is not going to be the only day called Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. There's going to be another one and another one and another one. Um, so, yeah, the, the cycles, what happened is that during the last 6,000 years, um, the Adamites, they were basically grafted and given dominion to rule the planet, right, for 6,000 years to see if, because a lot of the things that happen on this planet are experiments. Hence, I mentioned about Project 24, you know, so when um, District 3, Sector 3, District 6, Project 24, yeah, with the 24 is very significant. And I've done a whole video on the 369 and, you know, the numbers, right? Um, so this 24,000 years, this last 6,000 years of the 24,000 years known as the moon cycle was allotted to them to see if their nature would change. Because every cycle, a new, um, let's say, a new cycle of Adam and Eve was created to see how you improve. Because if the first one didn't do very well, you, you know, you try and improve. So they were like, let's see if you guys can live in peace, run this planet peacefully, don't abuse people, don't you know, do any bloodshed. But if you look at what's happened, it's been the exact opposite. So that time, they didn't realize it was actually programmed into their telomeres. The, the, when you look at your chromosomes, yeah, the X and Y chromosomes, if you look at the end of the chromosomes, you see that you have telomeres. The telomeres um, define how long you live. So they were programmed to fade out after 6,000 years. And that 6,000 years that we're talking about ended in the year 2000. And this is why now, um, you know, the wars, the diseases, the famines and things like that. And the fertility rate is so bad because how you know how long a species is going to be here for is by their birth rate. How many children that are being born over a, a period of time. And if you're not able to meet your quota, then you're fading out. Do some research on the fertility rate and you will see that this is not us making this up, it's science. Um... Okay, yeah, so we're in a positive cycle now, we're in the sun cycle, this is why more people are becoming more spiritual, more conscious, waking up, the, the Christ consciousness, and um, you know what I mean, just, just waking up to the truth, and so, yes, it's very positive. Um, Alright, next question, uh, listen to everything and question everything, that doesn't make sense, 
or feel right. God bless everybody and ever so taking info and supporting the movement. I love this group. Uh, I don't know what the question is there, but I think the comment about listen to everything and question everything, that doesn't make sense. Well, that's how you decipher who's telling you right from wrong. This was the whole purpose of you being responsible. So I think I mentioned that in a previous video because we were like, listen, if we tell you, if we come here, which we do and we say, Wusabat is the solution. Wusabat is the way. Yeah. There's going to be someone or people that are going to go, no, it's not. My way is the way. Okay. And you're going to get different schools of thought. This one's going to try and say it's this way, it's that way and the other. Now, as a person that, that's seeking or looking for truth, the only way you're going to decipher who's telling you the truth or not is to listen to them and then let your inner being tell you what resonates with you, what makes sense, what reasons out. Because the whole point of, the, of this little story in the Bible about the, the Adam and Eve in the garden and eating the fruit was what? So their eyes would be open for them to what? Know good from bad or good from evil. Because if you don't know good from evil, then how do you know that you're not being um, tricked, you see? So you do have to, we can't force it on anybody. It's got to resonate with you. It's got to spark off something within you in your DNA. It's got to make you feel like, you know what? I like what this is about, what they're saying. Let me check it out. You have to check it out. Because if you don't check things out, then you're, you're just following belief. That's what belief is. Belief is just believe me. Don't question me. Don't ask no questions. Don't check it out. Just because I say so, that's how it goes. Just believe me. And we say, no, nah, I can't believe you. I can't let you take me off a cliff. Do you know what I mean? I want to know, do you know what you're talking about? Do you know where you're going? If you don't know where you're going, how am I going to follow you? So you do have to question and research and check things out and then make up your mind based on how it resonates with you, ultimately, yeah? Okay, so I hope that clears that up. Um, did the Anunnaki bring Wusa back to this planet? No, the Nataru brought Wusa back to this planet. The Anunnaki, yeah, mixed in, eventually they mixed in with the, the children of the Nataru, yeah? So, for example, Enki went to Africa and took wives and had children, yeah? You have, later on, Enlil did the same. A lot of um, beings came here and they mixed with the original children of Nantharu, which, as I've mentioned before, would be those, those Pataites, right? Which evolved to becoming, you know, your Sans people. And so many beings came and mixed with those. So eventually you've got so many beings. So yes, the Anunnaki, um, as I've explained before, Anunnaki meaning those beings that Anu sent to the planet Ki, in groups of 50 and the first two of his he had many children but you know most of the time everybody just speaks about Enki and Enlil. Enlil was made father of the skies, Enki was made father of Ki or the planet Earth and they had jobs to do because they were mining the gold and then transporting the gold from the planet in shifts and crafts to Enlil then to Nibiru to take back to their home planet. So it was a project, but then things started to happen where the Anunnaki couldn't do the work because the atmosphere wasn't really, you know, good for them. And they complained, they started to fight amongst each other. Enlil and Enki were at war anyway with each other from before. And this is what we call conflict of the gods. And so en Enki started to defend the, the, the workers, saying that the work's too hard for them. So the solution was, let's create a being to do the work, or the Lulu Amilu. So that, that was because when Enlil came down, he came and he saw like there was chaos. Enki was wearing the gold. He was basically like in just basically not doing any work and, and like supporting the workers. So they went, Enlil went to tell Anu that was happening and they came up with a solution to create a being to do the work. That's a big story. I'm just giving you like a quick synopsis, yeah? But yeah, so um, the Natharu brought also back to the planet and we have a Natharu in the flesh amongst us who is still teaching Wusabat. No one knew about Wusabat or the term Wunupu or Wunuwap until Parnabab Janun started 
teaching about it on this planet. And that's what we're saying, that that should tell you that for someone to bring something new that no one's heard of, and you've seen the video on seven to six trillion years of having that amount of information, it's like everything else, everybody knows what it is. If you say to someone, I'm a Christian, they're like, cool. They know what that is. It doesn't really, it doesn't really um, have the same effect. If you say I'm a Muslim, I'm a Jew, um, everyone's just like, cool. You say I'm a Sabian or, I'm, um, or you say I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with Musabat. They're like, what? I'm a Nawabian. What? See, then you have to explain it, which shows you that you're the authority on that. You author that. It's real. It's original. It's new. But it's, it's not new in the sense that it's never been here. It's just new in the sense that when the monotheistic religions spread and you know, took over most of the world in terms of their ideology, a lot of people got caught up into one of these. This is why when you listen to people talk and have conversations, it's kind of funny because they're trapped in religion, in people, places and things, because they cannot get away from, at the end of it, saying, well, I'm a Christian, or I'm a Muslim, or, or I'm a Jew. Well, I believe my God, or I believe Allah. Like, that is information that traps you within uh, the confines of that particular religion, that book. You can't come outside of that, because if you do, it's like you're blaspheming, or you're going against your thing, whereas Wusabat is outside of that, but it deals with the knowledge of it, because it's above that. All right, let's move on, let's move on. Um, thanks for answering y'all yeah, yeah, miss my other questions why did Egypt fall and its descendants vanish there are still long bloodlines or the English parliaments where are the Egyptians who once ruled we are here we are the descendants of the Egyptians if you want to use that term but I keep explaining to you that the term Egypt does not describe the entire place this is why we go pre-dynastic we go to Napata, Moro, we go to the Nile Valley, we go to what we call the Patarites, yeah? This is the original people. Egypt is just but a small, tiny, like, section of what people have called Egypt. And they were never called Egypt, like I said already. I've already explained that in the first answer anyway. So when you say, where are they today in Parliament? Parliament and that whole English, they're like 6,000 years old. You, you can find, I've given the anthropology, anthropologist terms for the races on the planet, which go millions of years, right? So 6,000 years is quite small compared to millions and millions of years. Get the book. In our book, we explain and show you the different findings. Ardi, you know, Lucy, these are, these are like, they've dug up these skeleton bones and they know they go back millions of years. So the original Egyptians are walking all around the planet on the world, in the world right now. We are those people. We are descendants of them. It's in our bloodline. So I don't really get where you're coming from in terms of that question. Does Wusabat plan to organise an army? The world was taken by sword. Do you believe to reclaim it without violence? Listen, Wusabat is a peaceful way of life. And this army thing, like, what, does that, what, does, what do armies do? They just end up killing and, and bloodshed. And we are not planning on taking over the world and by the sword. Uh, the, you say the world was taken by the sword. Which world? I mean, if you're talking about, if you're talking about the Crusaders and, and um, you know, the Arabs and people that went around the world fighting by way of religion, which is still going on today, you know, Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, this is what's been happening for millions of years, like, like thousands of years. They're just fighting wars. Yeah, actually, going back to Enlil and Enki. So, Wusabat, yeah, it's a peaceful way of life and it's based on natural nature. You don't need to pick up tanks. Natural nature is dealing with removing, remember what I said at the beginning, the manifestation or the man that's infesting the planet by polluting the waters, by, do you know what I mean? Like just all the atrocities that are going on on the planet. And Mother Earth is tired of it and she is actually removing people. So, yeah, we, we, we're not about that... Um, organizing armies and it's like it's like if, if you say someone is a devil and you say what does a devil do and you say a devil kills wars stabs people shoots people all of that and then you do the same thing what makes what does that make you it just makes you a devil so you know what i mean that that reasoning doesn't it doesn't actually work obviously defending yourself is something different if you are attacked you will defend yourself 
and we don't turn the other cheek. If someone attacks us, we will defend ourselves, but not telling anyone to pick up arms. And we can go back in history and look at the people who tried that. Your Malcolm X's, who says by any means necessary, and you know they show him with the AK. It's like that was suicidal if you really think about it. And did it work? No, it didn't. If you don't create the guns, the weapons, the tanks, the ammunition, and you're fighting against someone who does, come on, man. Like, we have to be serious. Sometimes we, we talk about love is the key, love is power, and then we talk about, you know, violence. Um, violence is not the answer in that way. So it's about love and unity, divine love. Let natural, natural nature takes care of things, the tsunamis, the earthquakes, the tornadoes. No weapon actually can stand against that. So if you look at the world, study it carefully, you see that natural nature will take care of things. So, yeah, we're not, we're not um, advocating pick up arms, set up an army and all that. And violence. This is a new age. Why aren't your scrolls accessible online? Our scrolls are accessible online, however, there's a lot of piracy. People are duplicating, copying, PD turning our scrolls into PDF and sharing them. The whole Holy Tablets is online. Um, you have to remember that this is intellectual property, you know, and if it doesn't come from the source, the author of the books, um, if he doesn't give the sanction and the go-ahead for that to happen, it's not going to happen. But there's a lot of bootleg and people are doing this and it's not fair because like that's someone's intellectual property at the end of the day. So um, the time is coming. Um, we will be, and we are, we have got some stuff online already, but yeah, um, new age, the new age is here. Yes, we are the new age. We are the future. The old age is what? Decrepit and dying. It's like anything that's not changing is gonna die because that's, that's what it is. If you're not evolving and changing, then you're dead. You know, dead people don't need to change their clothes, but we change our clothes. So. Um, yeah, I hear you. Are whites allowed in Musabat? That's a funny question because are whites, who are whites? This, this, this is all the, the, the things that are created to divide people. White people are not white. Black people are not black. If you really look at yourself, this is not black. And white, there's no people I see looking like this. So I know what you mean, but you have to remember it's not about divisions. It's about do you resonate with Musabat? If you do and you, you, know, you listen to what the master teacher is saying and it resonates with you and you want to live a peaceful way of life and you want to practice Wusabat, everyone's welcome. Every teacher that is of that level is for the world in the sense that if, if you choose to do and practice a spiritual way of life, whether you're going to go and do, I don't know, become a Buddha, a Buddhist, um, follow Buddha, you can do that. Because what do they teach? They teach... Love and unity, let's come together, peaceful. Obviously, they defend themselves because religion, religion is a, a, a weapon that was used to divide people. And that's what's still happening today. Wusabat is about uniting people and coming together. And that's what we're about, to uplift humanity. So yes, whites, as you put it, can join Wusabat. Um, I particularly enjoyed, this is a big one, um, this, I particularly enjoyed the subject of channeling energy in the book Fast Track Your Spiritual and Conscious, Conscious Journey. My question is when intuition sets in regarding a person or subject and we ask our ancestors for help and our ancestors brings us the help by showing us the knowledge of who a person really is, how do we channel the disappointment when the bubble is busted. That bubble being the illusion of what we believe that person was. I was recently tested with this in the early stages of dating a particular person. Disappointment set in. I meditated, saged myself and my whole house, start listening to music I love and it helped. Am I on the right track? <laughs> that was a long question. <laughs> I think the last part is where am I on the last? Am I on the right track? Um, again, that ties into what I was saying about knowing yourself and knowing which beings you're connected to. But yes, in terms of when you've touched on the relationship part of it, that's so important because you have to get to know people. 
um, not just because they look nice, because you know, um, that you know, it's like you can't judge a book by its cover. You kind of have to look inside it, read it, get to know the person. Um, and yes, you may not be compatible, you know, and so you have to get to know the person. And if it doesn't work out, unfortunately, yeah, you just have to move on. As you say, um, music and things like that, it deals with emotions, right? Because when you're, when you're involved with someone, your emotions get entangled. And um, if, they, if it's not compatible, if, not, if it doesn't work out and you have to leave, you have to leave. Um, and, and then that energy, that emotions that you had, you have to figure out a way of channeling that energy. So yes, you're on the right track because some people will allow the negativity to get the better of them, you know, because you don't own anyone really in life. Like some people, if they break up from a relationship, they might do something disagreeable because, you know, some people are like, if I can't have her or him, Nobody else can have them. And sometimes they will go as far as even, you know, taking their life and then taking their own life. And it's just like, it's emotion. So you have to be in control of your emotions and know how to channel that energy properly. And it may be for the best that, you know, you might then come across or meet somebody else who's more compatible with you and it will work out. So yeah, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. What are the potential paths for our souls after our physical bodies die? Well, the potential part, uh, paths is that you continue to live another existence, you know, because this, this life is not the end because energy does not die. It can be transformed or it can basically be trapped. If you're not trapped, you're able to transcend and like, you see, like you've come here and had this life, you move on and have another life somewhere else. And life in that environment or that realm is going to be different to life here. So when we say that they're etheric beings, etheric beings live a life. But even that, I'm using English, so it's kind of hard to explain it. Because when you say life, here life is the burning or the amount of breaths you take based on your telomeres. So life can be defined as if you had a million breaths at the end of the millionth, that's your life done. Etheric beings don't need, they're not using physical bodies like we are, but they can see, but not with these eyes, they can see your energy or pick up your, like, your vibration or your aura. Yeah? So um, you can live, let's say that's one of one, another form of life you can live and then you can keep going because as I've explained, when you look at things on a, as a cosmosan, right, you're not just dealing with people, places and things. You're not trapping yourself in a religion, in one book, when there's so much information, so much knowledge in the world. You're not trapping yourself in a planet when there are many planets. You're not trapping yourself within a solar system or a galaxy or a universe when there are multiverses and omniverses and, you know, there is no limitation to what different types of existence you can experience if you make it, you know. So when you say that um, what's the path of the soul, that's one of them to continue on. Um, another one is it can be trapped and you can be trapped within this realm. Um, you can get to a point where you haven't elevated enough to have a soul to the point where you dissipate, meaning that energy cannot be destroyed but it cannot continue to elevate and live and have other experiences in other forms of existence. So, you know, it's up to you. You can either be trapped, be trapped here, be trapped in a realm lower than the higher ones, or evolve and continue to experience life in different forms of existence in different realms. All right, cool. Let's move on. Um, Great question right there. Yeah, people are supporting that question. This is what we're saying. Give the thumbs up, like, comment on the question you like. It gets pushed to the top. We get to address it. If you don't, you may not get it answered, yeah? So remember that. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, how do you fully decalcify the pineal gland? In today's day and age, seems like it will be daunting task with all the distractions, chemicals and everything we consume and wicked state of the world. 
Absolutely. This is why you can't let up. You got to do your best every day, like drink a lot of water. You don't actually need as much food as we, we consume, you know, like you can do with very little. Your stomach's actually literally that small, like, um, but there's a, a preoccupation with the with the media, with the advertising, you know, you want, you, you're told you eat, to eat three meals a day, you know, breakfast and lunch and supper. Why? Like, that's just a programming. And some people literally go like, if they haven't eaten three meals in a day, it's like they're falling to pieces. But it's about doing the best you can with what we have, fruit and veg, um, try to eat things to keep your body alkaline, drink lots of water, meditate, fast, um, relax, have fun. Do you know what I mean? Do, do things that are healthy. Go, go for walks in the parks, breathe, breathing exercises. So I know it is hard, but you can still maintain your world, you know, your, your world within the world, you know. So yeah, it's not easy. That's why you have to be on it every day. Um, bless brothers and sisters. Will the ET be making a public viewing anytime soon? I know some people take, it's like, they think it's a joke, like, um, some question. I don't know if you are being serious or not, but ET, extraterrestrial, that's all it is, and they're already here, they make their appearance every day, you probably walk past them every day, they're different types of extraterrestrial, people say these things like, to, in mockery or like it's a joke, but, you know what I mean, to each their own, when you say making a public a, a viewing anytime soon, they're on the TV, they're people that shapeshift, they're people that are wearing skin suits. This is a vast topic, so if you're being silly, then be silly, but um, extraterrestrials have been here, they've been here for thousands of years. Come and go, live here, live with us. So let me move on to that other question. next question. Thank you, Sir Ken, for this most clear, understandable information and knowledge. It is so good to have someone help us learning and us wanting to know the truth, and you help make it so understandable and give sound example of real and actual proof. I appreciate the millions of years of wisdom and knowledge of Dr. York. Peace, love and light <laughs> of Christ consciousness. Yeah, we say karast, karast consciousness, yeah. But yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Um, Sandra Williams, 6164. Yeah, we appreciate love, not appreciate you. We appreciate you hear the tones. Um, yeah, like 76 trillion years is a lot of information. And one person um, cannot do it all. This is why you need student teachers. We're all supposed to be teaching Wu Sabat because to change the vibration and the frequency on the planet, you're talking about a planet of what, some 7 billion people. Yeah, for it to reach everyone or as many people as possible because everyone has to have some kind of opportunity. I remember years ago when I first came into Wu Sabat, and I used, to, I used to hear like, Wu Sabat's gonna reach the world. Everyone's gonna know about the master teacher. I used to be like, how's that gonna happen? Remember, at this time, there was no internet. There was no YouTube. There was no social media. So when I saw the evolution of the internet and social media and the fact that no matter where you are in the world, you could get this information, I was like, ah, oh, this is what I mean about connecting the dots when something comes to you at first, you might not fully understand it, but with patience and with time, you will see that it actually makes sense. And that's another thing I want to say about Dr. York, is like, the people that used to ridicule him and say he was crazy, talking about extraterrestrial, talking about Shambhala Nagatar, in terms of the inner world, the caverns, talking about giants that came here, talking about extraterrestrials, talking about the free parent birth, talking about tri-solar systems, talking about he's from a planet called Risk, talking about all kinds of things that people were like, this guy's crazy, he's nuts. And remember, he put it in books. These books are still available till today. And nothing that he has said has not come true. And it's verifiable because he can say, yep, it was written in that book in 1920 or 19 whatever, sorry, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. So people can laugh and... Yeah, but we, those of us who have been studying and following, everything correlates, everything matches up. No one can be that good of a liar, because I know when people lie, every time they tell the story, it changes, every single time. Like, ask the person the same thing over and over again, and you're going to hear that they're going to change it. So a little bit is going to change here and there. But when it's so, 
like exact all the way. You can hear him say, I'm, I'm Yanun, like years ago. You can hear Parnabab Yanun or Amanubira Akata. These are things that till this day stand firm. So um, let me keep going. I want to get through as many as I can. Question, although time is an illusion, it still affects us on this plane of existence. Therefore, how important is time and is my life already written out beforehand? When I dream, I see what's going to happen two weeks in advance. Is this because there are so many outcomes of this same life or could it be because I am aligned with my real avatar? That question um, covers quite a lot of ground. Um, so when you deal with time, yes, time based on what we know of time in this time belt, um, it's an illusion in the sense that it's not moving forward or backwards. Like there's real time that exists and then there's what we call man-made time, you know, in terms of the clocks and the tick and the tock and people think it's moving, but it, it, it's actually all happening at the same time. It's like it is <laughs> um, spiraling, as we were saying before. Because it's a circle and life is cycles, um, if you're in one part of the circle, it doesn't mean the other ones don't exist because it, it just goes round and round. Um, but yet they're different what you could call timelines um, or what, you know, if you, if you want to say um, there's a particular word I'm looking for. Um, oh, what is it? There's actually a movie called um, Continuum. That's the word I was looking for, Continuum. Um, continuum is basically like, yeah, you can have different different times or different time, time, um, timelines. Yeah, so you can tap into the different timelines, but you also said about your avatar in terms of, yes, your etheric double or counterpart can be experiencing things um, and, and then you're catching up with them or you're then receiving that because you, you share information. Yeah, so I hope that's helped. Um, when it comes to Western psychology and psychiatrists, when you say that institutions have an agenda, what usually is their agenda? Um, well, their agenda and they <laughs> um, can be manifold. You know, there are people that want to control the world, want to control resources, want to um, anyone that is probably able to break out of the matrix it's a potential threat because they can wake other people up, you know? So for example, if there's only one person, it's not such a problem for them, they're like, mm, we can deal with them. But when you're somebody like, let's say for example, take Dr. York, um, being a supreme being, he was like, I'm a supreme being. But other people be like, oh, he's ego. But he's like, no, I can make you also a supreme being. I can teach you and raise you to be a supreme being. Now. If you start teaching the world or many people to be supreme beings, then it becomes a problem because then if you stop eating the crap, you start, you know, stop fighting against each other, stop the wars, um, then the industries that benefit from this, so for example, the pharmaceutical industries, won't have any patients. Um, Imagine the armies, they're not going to have wars to fight. So what would be the point of making tanks, guns and weapons? Um, if, you know, you keep going, you see that if people wake up, start eating right, their health is going to get better. So the health industry is going to suffer because it's a cycle. You know, if there are no patients, there's no need for hospitals. <laughs> if there's no crime, there's no need for police. If there's no wars, there's no need for armies. You know, we can keep going on and on and on. Or what you would do is utilise the resource in a better way, you know, to, like, look after the elderly, help people, you know, clean up the planet for some. There's so much you could do with all that resource and that energy that is channelled towards fighting against each other, divisions and killings and murders and so on. So... Um, it actually benefits some people for the, to have the chaos. 
then you have disagreeable energy that feed off of the, ne the negative energy that is created from this. So, yeah, I'm just saying, like, there, there are um, ulterior motives and sometimes some sinister agendas. Okay, um, I'm going to take a few more. Yeah, that one is big. It's a long one, so... Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can pick one or two more because these ones now don't, they all kind of have the same amount of likes. Great work, guys. Keep it up. Thank you for, for very much for answering my previous questions. Uh, yeah, that's a long one. I'll come back. Some of the ones we skipped today, we might, you know, like them, subscri subscribe, like, share, comment on the questions and we'll get pushed to the top. What is the perspective on abortion and who is making the decision in, in Wusabat? Since previously it was stated there's a specific amount of times you can come back. We don't, um, we don't promote abortions in Wusabat. Um, so, because by natural nature, things will happen naturally. Um, that's a big question. It's not probably one we can go into today. Um, but yeah, I understand the question in terms of who's making the decision is the person that's taking the life. And you can consider that as murder to a certain degree if, if, if you know, um, some, some life is taken. But that's something I think we're going to have to re revisit and address. But um, we have our commandments um, and we, we, yeah, we don't, we don't um, promote abortions. All right. But um, let me see. If we, are, if we are here on earth to experience, grow and make the grade, why the need for fasting? Wouldn't that be part of experiencing the many flavours and taste in this dimension rather than deny ourselves those experiences? I said this before and I'll say it again. Please try to ask, learn how to ask a question and ask it, you know, directly and sub, you know, just make it easy. Um, and I'm not just saying that to that question, I'm saying that to, to everyone. Um, that's like saying you don't need to do any work, you can just do what you like. I mean, imagine if everybody could do what they like, there would be chaos, you know, so there has to be order. The universe is not, it's not chaotic, it's not supposed to be chaos, so you have to earn your, you have to earn your grade. Not everybody is about the right thing, so you know, you have to think about that when you're saying that. Uh, we can't just do what we like because the beings, the high intelligent beings that run the planet, run the universe and the, guard, the guardians of the galaxy, etc., there has to be order that they maintain. And if they see chaos or things going out of balance, they have to fix it. Uh, my intuition has been with me all my life. Mitochondrial DNA has been correct and almost everything I've felt has occurred. The jab in particular. Okay. Uh, great information. I'm still a bit of a skeptic. However, as I'm learning from you, your teachings, my guard is slowly coming down. Yeah, that's what we mean by, you know, we're not, we're not here to recruit and it's down to you. Like, study and if it resonates with you. Um, and it, you know, makes sense, you know what to do. Oh, last one, I'm going to take this one, because um, what is the Wusabat perspective on Sofuji, if I'm pronouncing it right, frequencies, is this the math of Allah or some trickery? No, um, again, this goes back to the vibrations and frequencies, meaning that like I mentioned before, I can't go into it today, but you know the brother Terence Howard, I, I mentioned in my last video how he's one of the people, I'm, pe people that I'm listening to at the moment because he makes basic things make sense. Like one times one should be two. We've been taught is one. And he went as far as showing how that has been programmed in the calculators to deceive you. And it's so minute, so simple that people would like not, they will miss it. But mathematics is what everything is built on. So if you get it wrong, even by just a little bit, it's wrong. It's like 
if you're trying to calculate something and you were going to be a millionaire, but one P was short, you're not a millionaire. You see, that's how, as small as it is, it's significant. So he's explaining that with the maths, if it's wrong, then when you start to do greater things, like I mentioned traveling interstellar, for example, you, you can't travel in straight lines because everyone tells you that the, the uh, shortest way to travel between two distances in a straight line. But that's not true in terms of if you can bend, right? If it's not a straight line, if you can bend it, you can make them meet. So instead of traveling, you can just go like that and they will meet, going into wormholes and portals and things like that. I'm saying that to say that if the calculator is wrong, then you're thrown off. We're probably gonna have to do a video on this, but um, I'm saying that to relate to your question about music. Music is tuned, the temperament that is tuned on the musical instruments was done on purpose. So like for example, the key of C is tuned to 440 Hertz, which is the, the resonant frequency is wrong. It's, it's, not, it's not agreeable, right? It should be 432 Hertz. So in relation to your question, somebody went about the tuning or tuning out the instrument so that you don't get the right frequency. So by going back to the right frequencies, in our case, we mentioned about the F, A and the C, because these tie your body, which is the A, right? The F is nature or the planet, and then the C deals with the cosmos. These are, everything vibrates on a particular frequency. So when you tie in with the frequencies that are conducive, then you're gonna be calm. The reason I tie it to Terence Howard is because you can heal thing, people of all kinds of ailments and diseases with frequencies, with vibration. So it's not about just the electrical charge, it's about the vibration. So you can tune yourself back into order because you've been out of tune. So that question is so great because that's what, that's what they've done with music. So the tones around the planet, the music that is produced, a lot of it is synthetic as well. So it changes the frequency and the vibration. So yes, you are right, it's not uh, some trickery, it's just that the maths is wrong in terms of the music, because music ties into maths, because remember, music is built on notes, yeah? And you have pulse, rest, there's rest between music, you know? When you get into music deep, you see that it's mathematics. So yeah, it's, it's like what I'm saying with the calculators and with the whole one times one thing, with the music is thrown off. And then you can go into higher sciences as well and you see like, like I said, it's gonna, if you're gonna go and you're traveling at say 600, I don't know, thousand miles, um, which is say beyond the speed of light, if you miss where you wanna go to by just one degree, you can basically phew, miss it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's the end for today. We've come to the end of the questions that we can take. Remember, Comment, like your questions, yeah, like your friends' questions, like the questions that you would like to be answered so that they will go to the top. Remember, subscribe to OSM Vision. We have classes regular, we have videos every week. So until next week for the next episode, we're out of here. Peace, love and unity. Wadu. Well,